having a limited winter schedule. Uh, kids were really eager to get out there and, and compete and compete in front of uh, their family and friends and uh, the, the community. Um, so I think that's been a really driving force um, and having a full schedule has been exciting as well, even though you never know when you're actually gonna play those games. Uh, we've had some cancellations yep. here and there and we quickly pivot and everyone's been really, really flexible with doing that. And uh, we're looking forward for the next you know, couple weeks of regular season and then headed into playoffs where we're gonna hopefully host a whole bunch of games. It's really picking up now. And you know, I think uh, just this, the fact that these last couple of months, kids have been able to be kids, compete, have their families participate and watch the games. It's just been awesome. We're going to take a, a moment or two now to hear from the captains themselves. Wait till you hear what they have to say about how successful this season's been. Let's check that out. I'm Nick Pierce. I'm from the wrestling team, and we're 11-0 and right now. We've won four tournaments, and we're getting ready for our state tournament here to break a record that's been going for 34 years, so we're pretty excited. All right. My name's Autumn. I'm senior, and I'm captain of the girls' varsity basketball team. Um, our current record is 11-4, and four, and we only have two weeks left before the playoffs. Um, we've been playing great team basketball this year, and it's really fun to play with these girls, and I hope to see you all at the odd. Uh, hi, I'm Cooper Diego. I'm the captain of the boys' varsity basketball team. So far, we are 11-2 and two on the season, sitting at the four spot in D2. Uh, I'd like to shout out the seniors. They've all been playing well with energy, and our senior game is February 21st, and we're looking forward to playoffs. Hi, my name is Zoe Tewksbury. I'm captain of the Spalding Girls hockey team. We're currently 13-1, and one, outscoring opponents 87-16. to 16. Stay tuned for the rest of our season. Thank you for your support. Hi, I'm Jameson Mass, captain of the boys hockey team. I'm Jameson Solomon, captain of the boys hockey team. We have a 5-9 and nine record this year, and uh, we're, we're moving up in the rankings, so it's been we're a good gonna, year. We're going to make a deep playoff run this year. Yep. Hi, my name is Noah Rubel, and I'm one of the co-captains on the indoor track team. We had a nice season this year. We had a bit of a smaller team, but it was still really nice to work together and it was super fun. Um, hopefully things will be good in preparation for outdoors this year. Well, thanks for listening to these captains, everybody. What a season and it's so great to hear directly from them. I know this, they are super thankful to one of the big heroes in our community, our Spalding Athletic Director, Natalie Sofen, who was here at the beginning of this showcase with me. At the risk of embarrassing her, I want to point out the incredible job she has done this winter to make sure our students Isabel Crossman puck is on the ice, week, and we're underway. Zoe Tewksbury fires it down into the Raider zone. Becca Kelvey and Patorti in the corner, right out front to Chelsea Bell, goes right through the slot area. Goaltender McDermott is able to clear it to the side. Now Becca McKelvey has the puck. McKelvey goes down low to Molly Parker. Parker circles. Parker goes back over. That one went back over to Bell. Now Petorti in back of the net. Petorti will fire the pass out, looking for Cooley. Kept in, though, by the Crimson Tide. Now they work the puck over to Addison Hubert, but the Crimson Tide pinch in, keep it in the zone. Puck is now going to pick up Crossman. Can't get it out. It's loose in front. Here's Becca McKelvey with a wide open shot. It was fed out front from Chelsea Bell to Becca McKelvey for the shot. And Sierra McDermott comes up with the save. First minute of this game entirely in the Rutland zone. Crimson Tide off that faceoff have controlled. Emily Morris on the draw for the uh, Crimson Tide. The Raiders will fire it out to center ice. Lily Tewksbury playing defense. And I'll pick up who the uh, other defenseman is for the Crimson Tide shortly. Looks like Lily Tewksbury playing defense for the Spalding Crimson Tide along with Lainey Thayer as she moves up to play the point. Now Bria Dill throws it through the slot area. Portia Berard will chase for the puck. It's going to be cleared out, but that is going to be icing on the Rutland Raiders. As we mentioned in the opening, these two teams played earlier this season back down at Spartan Arena, and it was a tight one. Crimson Tide only won by a goal. I believe the final score was two to one. As uh, Rutland kind of been a thorn in the Crimson Tide's back the last year or so. There's the shot, McDermott comes up with a save. It's loose in front, and Dill can't quite redirect it toward the open net. Now it's Emily Morrison back in the net. She throws it out front, so it'll be taken at the point. Parker's shot is knocked down on the way in. 
Raiders will try to work it around, but the Crimson Tide keep it in. Dell with a tough angle shot. That puck's going to be picked up by Elizabeth Studley. And here's a breakout now. Here comes Crossman. Crossman into the Crimson Tide zone. She's ridden over into the corner. Crossman now tries to fire the puck back to Cooley. The puck is kept in by Addison Hubert. Now in back of the net, they throw it out front, trying to get it to Crossman. It's loose and it's cleared wide as Rutland able to center that puck and uh, just couldn't get a stick on it. Couple of chances there right in front of Maddie Seaton, even though they didn't come away with a shot. Good scoring opportunity. Crimson Tide pass, they were looking for Karina Moulton. The wave off the icing. First to get there is Erika Petorti. Puck is going to be stolen back though as the Crimson Tide will start again. It passes right on a Rutland stick and it's thrown down by Sydney Wood. Lily Tewksbury over to Moulton. Wood keeps it in though. Wood fires it down low. Raiders try to work it and back in the net. Crimson Tide though will come away with it. Trouble getting out of their zone. Now here's a Spalding break. McKelvey gets it over to Moulton. Karina Moulton, two defenders back. Moulton's shot is blocked, goes over into the corner. She retrieves it. Now she gets it over to McKelvey. Tough angle shot. McKelvey got a piece of the post and it went out. Rang the post, but it bounced out. Crimson Tide will keep it in. And uh, Lily Tewksbury will touch up. 11.36 to go, first period, no score. And the Crimson Tide draw a penalty as Karina Moulton will be going into the box. Faceoff will go down into the Crimson Tide zone. And the Raiders get a power play opportunity. They send out that top unit of Crossman along with Cooley. Now Cooley fires it back to the point. Now they work it down low. Now they go back high. Trying to work the puck around. Goes over the stick of Crossman, but it's kept in at the point by Lindstone. Crimson Tide almost steal it. Hannah King almost gets a piece of that one. Now skating in is Addison Hubert. Hannah King, though, will not get it out. It's going to be kept in by Petorti. Molly Parker tries to get it out. It's kept in, though, at the point by Lindstone. But Molly Parker steals it back for the Crimson Tide. Petorti keeps it in at the point. 45 seconds of this power play have trickled away, though, and Zoe Tewksbury finds an open seam. She'll fire it down. McKenna Hubert gets to the puck for Rutland. They change up a couple of players on this power play. She works the puck around to Molly Abatel. Now a potential two on one. However, offsides skating in was Crossman for the Rutland Raiders. Potential two on one, but Crossman was uh, quite a bit ahead of that play. 53 to go on the power play, 10.29 to go, first period. No score. Raiders on the power play, but the puck is going to be picked up. Thayer is going to bank it off the boards. McKelvey will try to get it out. And Becca McKelvey is able to clear that puck out to center ice. Got to watch Chelsea Bell with the speed out there, shorthanded. Thayer will fire it around, but it's intercepted. They try to center it out front. Now the puck is taken away. Crimson tied with a potential break. Bell with McKelvey. Bell moves around, was kind of forced over into the near side, lost control of the puck as McKelvey is a little too close to her. Now Bell again, they're ragging time. They find McKelvey, misfires on that shot, and Rutland will break the other way. Rutland will fire it down, Wood will fire it down. Raiders will change things up, penalized player back on for the Crimson Tide. This pass is going to be knocked down by Cooley. Now Elizabeth Cooley, nice rush. Cooley faceoff circle, tries to set up Crossman for the shot, but it's knocked down. Good setup there. Or actually tried to set up Hubert for the shot. Portia Berard now with one defender back, but getting back to help out. Good hustle by Hubert. 
The Raiders bank it around the boards. Thrown back down by the Crimson Tide. Puck on the stick of Zoe Tewksbury, but it's poked back down into the Crimson Tide zone. Parker gets it over to Portia Berard. Berard along the boards. The puck is fired down. Emily Morris will fire it down into the Raider zone. Petorti picks up the puck for Rutland. Petorti gets it over to Wood. Wood banks it off the boards. Then it's thrown back down by Thayer. Now cross ice pass. Two defenders back. Getting a piece of that, and it's taken away by Lily Tewksbury. Tewksbury circles. Tries to get it over to Hannah King. Is kept in at the point, though. Went off inside the blue line, so the Raiders will have to clear the zone. Here comes Chelsea Bell. Bell over the blue line. Tried to force her way in. The puck eventually was tipped away. Puck will be fired back out to center ice. Thayer gets it over to McKelvey. Some new line combinations for the Crimson Tide. Puck is stolen away now. It's Bell in the corner. Bell battling for the puck, but Cooley comes up with it. Cooley reverses. And as Elizabeth Cooley is skating out, and I'm following the action, we've got a penalty call. And it's going to be another Crimson Tide penalty. Penalty away from the, the uh, puck. It'll be on Chelsea Bell. Raiders will go right back out on the power play. Officials briefly tending to a Spalding Crimson Tide player. We've got a double header coming up on Saturday. The Spalding boys, I've got to check my schedule. I believe they are on the road. Oh, I know they're on the road today. In fact, uh, the Spalding boys are playing. They're up at BFA. That's right, the trip to St. Albans. They're taking on BFA. Very tough game for the Spalding boys. They come back here on Saturday to take on South Burlington. So we'll face it off down into the Crimson Tide zone. And it's a power play opportunity. Crossman will take the draw. Puck is thrown over into the corner. Raiders will try to set up, circling around. Trying to chip it toward the front of the net. Maddie Seaton with a save. A second shot goes off the pad. And they're able to clear it out. Couple of chances on the power play. One very good one for Cooley. For the Spalding fans that don't have a roster, Cooley wears number 12 for Rutland. Now breaking in, but the shot is deflected. Deflected over into the corner. That was Addison Hubert. Another shot goes off the pad of Seaton. Raiders getting some shots on goal on this power play. Now they go back, but uh, that uh, was over the blue line. So that'll move the face off out on the offsides. Definitely power play number two, much better for Rutland than their first one. One twelve to go in the power play. 6.45 to go first period. No score between Spalding and Rutland. Hannah King will speed down, get there first. She's trying to wrap the puck around the corner, but the puck was taken away. Now Crossman will skate it out on the power play, but stolen away. Good job with the stick is Hannah King. King is taken down into the boards. Looking to change thing up. Cooley will fire it down. It'll go on the stick of Lily Tewksbury. Tewksbury, plenty of time just to fire it down into that Raider zone. McKenna Huber will fire it over to Molly Abitow. 
That will be icing, though, on Rutland as they fire it in. Only 15 to go on the Raider power play. It looked good early. Second half of the power play, Rutland has struggled. But they were able to fire, I, I counted, I believe, three shots on Maddie Seaton. Because of the penalty shots in this game, fairly even through five minutes to go. That shot deflects off the goaltender, McDermott, and goes up high. Now Zoe Tootsbury tries to work it down low, but the puck is picked up by Hubert. Hubert's pass over to Wood it deflects off her stick. Now Becca McKelvey with Chelsea Bell. Bell tries to reverse it back to McKelvey. McKelvey looks for someone open at the point. It's Molly Parker. Parker shot. McDermott makes the save. She looks backwards for a split second. And the puck may have trickled in, but the whistle was blown. Referee immediately with the signal. No goal. As Molly Parker moved in, no one was challenging her, so she got a decent shot off. And the puck just kind of slid under the pad, and we got the, got the whistle. Crimson Tide win that face off. However, it goes on a Rutland stick, and Rutland able to clear it out. Now Zoe Tewksbury looks for Portia Berard, but knocking down the pass was Addison Hubert. Hubert gets it over to Crossman. Crossman comes in, it goes high off Maddie Seaton. The rebound and they score. And the Raiders get on the scoreboard. 4.58 to go of the first period. The initial shot went high off Maddie Seaton where the rebound came right out in front. And the Rutland Raiders able to knock it in and they pick up the first goal. We'll pick up the goal announcement from the PA in a couple of moments. See how the Crimson Tide respond. They win the faceoff. Bria Dill skates in, but the puck is knocked away. Addison Hubert and Crossman get the assist on the goal by Cooley. And that gives Rutland the 1-0 lead. Crimson Tide now try to work it in the corner. Goes back to the point. Tewksbury shot. McDermott didn't see that. It deflects off her and she scores. That was Lily Tewksbury. Let's it go from the point. And the Crimson Tide answer back less than a minute later. It hit her body and it might have knuckled just a little bit, but it ended up in the back of the net. At the 417 mark, we are tied at one apiece on the goal from Tewksbury. Now they're banking it off the boards, looking for Bell. Bell tries to split the D. Good defensive play to knock that puck away. Have the Crimson Tide keep it in the zone again. They fired out front. Now trying to do a wraparound. Plenty of net there, but Bell could not get the stick on it. Now Zoe Tewksbury with a shot. And a save by McDermott. Big pressure there. Couple of chances. One was Bell. The other was Zoe Tewksbury. McKelvey will take the draw as she wins it back to Molly Parker. Parker's shot is wide. It's going to deflect off the boards. First to get there is Hubert. Hubert goes down, though, takes a rough spill near the boards, and we're going to get a whistle on that one as there'll be a stoppage of play. Yeah, she's just in a difficult position, and she went down. Gives us a chance to take a look at uh, our schedule as far as what we have for you on Saturday. As we mentioned here at the Barry BOR, it's going to be a high school hockey doubleheader coming up on Saturday. And our first game is going to be kind of the rematch that Spalding has waited for. 
Undefeated BFA comes to the Barry BOR to take on the Crimson Tide. That'll be a 5 o'clock start. That'll be, or actually, that'll be a 3 o'clock start on Saturday. And then we'll follow that one up with South Burlington as the Spalding Crimson Tide boys take on the South Burlington Wolves. That'll be about a 5.15 start. Injured player is up, and the players bang their sticks on the ice. Basically with enough for two lines, couple of extra players, 4D and a goalie. And that's exactly what Rutland has. Injured player, though, is walking it off, going to the locker room, but walking under their own strength. Now Becca McKelvey takes the draw, tries to get it over to Bell. Now Hannah King. King speeds around the back of the net, throws it out front to McKelvey. It was loose there. McKelvey with one chance, a second chance, and the Crimson Tide barrier. A lot of Crimson Tide jerseys in front of the net. And that time poking it in for Spalding was Chelsea Bell. They probably had three or four whacks at it before the puck finally went in the net. That comes at the 326 mark, so the Crimson Tide respond quickly. After Rutland takes the lead, they come back with two quick ones to take a 2-1 lead. Now Parker was trying to fire the puck out, but it's intercepted. McKelvey draws the assist on Chelsea Bell's goal. We mentioned she had two back on last Saturday against the Kingdom Blades. And notches another one here for the Crimson Tide. 3.01 to go in the first period. It'll be Emily Morris on the draw. 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 It'll 
It'll be Emily Morris on the draw. It'll be Emily Morris on the draw. Crimson Tide get two in the first period, and the Raiders get one after one period of play. Spalding with a one-goal lead. We'll get your shots, and then we'll briefly recap the scoring for you. As the fans are working their way into this game. Shots were even, 9-9. Nine, nine. Of course, Rutland did have two power plays in the first period. So the shots even on the scoreboard. Spalding leads it by a score of 2-1. to one. It was uh, Rutland getting on the score. And Izzy Crossman to make it 1-0. to That came at... Lily Tewksbury that came at the 417 mark. The action on CBTV 723.org, CBTV channel 192 in Barrie, and of course it's on CBTSport.net. Jim Severance along with Ben Brown and Todd Mansfield will take a break, and we'll come back with second period action for you very shortly. This game is made possible by the Barry Montpelier Times Argus, www.timesargus.com, with award-winning sports and news journalists located on 47 North Main Street, Suite 200 in Barry, Vermont. You can reach them at 479-0191. The Barry Montpelier Times Argus is real local news that matters to Central Vermonters. Central Vermont's newspaper of record. That's www.timesargus.com. This game video is made possible by All Set Driving School. All Set Driving School offers three teen driver's education class sessions, spring, summer, and fall. With DMV certified instructors, contact them by phone, 371-9293, or email allsetdrive at aol.com. All Set Driving School, a proud supporter of U32 basketball and Central Vermont sport. Tournament Specialties is a proud sponsor of local area high school sports. If your team or business needs assistance in designing the perfect look, give them a call. Whether you're looking for a one-color tee, shirt design, or multicolor designs on your garments, Tournament Specialties can help. They do professional embroidery work also. If you don't have an existing logo, no problem. They will help you create an embroidered logo from concept to completion and can stitch on everything from shirts to jackets to duffel bags and blankets. Jeff and his crew take pride in their quality work and guarantee your happiness. Tournament Specialties also offers online storefronts. If your company or team is looking for a great fundraising opportunity, Tournament Specialties can help with no upfront risk to the organization and no minimum order requirements. Give them a call today to inquire. Jeff Apfo of Tournament Specialties on 64 Cherrywood Drive, Barrie, Vermont. Reach them at tournamentdesigns at gmail.com, 802-272-7572. Made possible by locally owned Packard Fuels, located in East Montpelier, Vermont. Packard Fuels is a proud supporter of local athletics and community events. Packard Fuels provides home heating oil and service throughout central Vermont. Owned by Ellery Packard III, Packard Fuels, 802-262-3835. Packard Fuels, keeping you warm. 
Northfield Savings Bank is the bank of builders, makers, doers, and explorers, multitaskers, commuters, planners. In other words, we are the bank of you and everything you do. With mobile and online banking, drive-up service, and of course, in our branches. That is banking your way. That is Northfield Savings Bank. This game is made possible by the Barry Montpelier Times Argus. www.timesargus.com with award-winning sports and news journalists located on 47 North Main Street, Suite 200 in Barry, Vermont. You can reach them at 479-0191. The Barry Montpelier Times Argus is real local news that matters to Central Vermonters. Central Vermont's newspaper of record. That's www.timesargus.com. Mark and I worked at Barrytown Elementary School when we were in college. We're both very family-oriented and community-driven. Barry has a special place in our heart, obviously being our hometown. When I met Mark and Ruben, they were college grads. Seven years later, they manage over 750 units in Vermont. In their spare time, they give back to the people they grew up with. There are people in our community who are battling childhood cancer. This organization doesn't just financially fund their hospital bills. We actually help them out with the day-to-day -day expenses. Local business owners, local community members, just a lot of local people that are congregating to uh, help raise, raise a lot of money for these families. In small towns everywhere across America, this story gets repeated over and over. Local businesses coming together to support their friends, neighbors, and customers. Our priorities and the bank's priorities align. We're all trying to make the community a better place.
from the Barry BOR getting ready for second period action. Spalding Crimson Tide taking on the Rutland Raiders after one. Spalding leads it by a score of two to one. Jim Severance along with Ben Brown and our cameraman Todd Mansfield dancing a little bit to some uh, MJ as they're playing it between periods here at uh, the Barry BOR. I mentioned in my opening that uh, the last time these two teams met, which was last uh, February during the COVID-shortened season playoffs, Rutland had a different nickname. They were the Rutland Ravens. Well, for years they were known as the Rutland Raiders. I tracked the story a little bit. And in October of uh, 2020, the school board down in Rutland voted to retire the Raiders uh, moniker after a group of students, staff and alumni expressed concerns about racism in mascots origins. So that happened in October of 2020. Then the school board that year in February of 2021, they officially replaced it with the Ravens. That was a name that a group of high school students from Rutland chose after seeking suggestions from the city residents and other students in the district. Well, then the following month, city voters in Rutland had an election and they elected three school board candidates who supported bringing back the Raiders. The community support was that uh, the tradition of the Raiders had come back. So the school board changed. And then in January of this year, only a month ago, it resulted in a six to five vote to discontinue the Raven name and adopt the Raiders name. So they are back to Raiders in Rutland as uh, the community spoke out. We've seen this in other communities and usually the reversal does not happen. Same thing happened in South Burlington about uh, three years ago when uh, the South Burlington Rebels were changed to the South Burlington Wolves. And then some people in the community were upset about that. They tried to reverse it there. They did not reverse it. However, down in uh, Rut Vegas, they like the Raiders. What they are going to do is they are going to modify the logo, which had a big Indian. You don't see the logo on the jerseys here at the game. But uh, they are going to modify the logo to make it more modern with the times that we live in. All right, teams are out on the ice as we had a chance to kill a couple of moments here. Rutland against the Spalding Crimson Tide, two to one game. Did notice between periods that we will not see Karina Moulton for the rest of the game for the uh, Crimson Tide. Suffered an injury to her wrist and she has gone to the locker room. It'll be the Chelsea Bell, Becca McKelvey, and Portia Berard line starting for the Spalding Crimson Tide. And the Crossman line with uh, Cooley. And number 12, Hubert for, or number 19, Hubert for Rutland. Puck is on the ice, underway with the second period. And skating in is Crossman. Crossman, nice shooting angle, and a save by Maddie Seaton. Right off the bat, 14 seconds in. Raiders get a good scoring opportunity from Isabel Crossman. Crossman and Chelsea Bell take the draw. They go back to the point. Petorti with a shot, deflected a little bit, but just a tiny bit in on Maddie Seaton. And right off the bat, Seaton has had to make two saves. Shots in the first period were even. Crossman again on the draw. This time the puck is going to be fired out. Petorti, though, will fire it down low. McKelvey tries to work it around in back of the net. Big hit there. Now Chelsea Bell puts a hit on a Rutland Raider, and Bell is definitely going to go for a penalty. I don't think we're going to see a Crimson Tide penalty. We'll have to see. There was back-to-back -back hits. And there's only going to be one penalty, and it's only it's going to be on Bell. Getting physical in back of the net. Two hits, one gets the call, and uh, the Raiders will go on the power play. It'll be Crossman on the draw. 
Now they work the puck near side. Cooley goes back to Petorti for a shot. Seaton with the save. It deflected almost on the stick of Crossman for a redirect. Now the puck is knocked down by Bria Dill. Raiders will skate it out. Addison Hubert will chase for the puck. Hubert has Crossman heading toward the front of the net. However, the puck is tipped away for a split second by the Crimson Tide. Ah, there's a shot from the point. It's knocked down on the way in. It's Gallopole with that shot. Now another one for Cooley. That would have been wide, but gloving it anyway is Seaton. She comes up with the save. 121 to go on the Raider power play. Crimson Tide will change things up, and the Raiders will also change up. It'll be Kennedy on the draw for Rutland. Against Emily Morris. Goes back to the point for a shot. It's wide. Picking the puck out of the corner is Addison Hubert. Hubert goes back to the point. Now Hubert throws it through the slot area. There's no one there. Molly Abatel will try to dig it out of the corner. It'll go on a Crimson Tide stick, and it's going to be cleared all the way down into the Rutland zone. And a Gallopo banks it off the boards, looking for Abatel. Now skating in is Kennedy. Kennedy's shot is wide. It's going to work its way over into the far side. Sidney Wood tries to throw it out front. Now a shot from the point, and Maddie Seaton comes up with the save. There was some traffic there, but Maddie Seaton seemed to have a clear vision and made the glove save. Raiders have been Crossman out there to play the high point on this power play. 42 to go on the power play. And here come the Crimson Tide. Portia Berard with good speed. Berard breaks in. Berard comes in shorthanded and she scores! Portia Berard goes end to end for the Crimson Tide and buries a shorty and it's three to one. This is definitely one you want to check out on uh, the highlight. She came in tight on the goaltender and flicked it up on McDermott. Short-handed goal for the Crimson Tide by Portia Burrard, and they lead it by a score of 3-1. to one. Here comes Crossman now breaking into the zone. Shot is wide of the net. Raiders are buzzing with only 15 seconds to go on the power play. But that puck is going to be cleared out by McKelvey. Penalized player Bell will be back on. Here's Cooley. Cooley cross ice pass. Now that's going to be intercepted by Berard. She tried to throw that one back to Bell. It's going to go down. Petorti will get there first, but Bell right behind her. Petorti around the boards, kept in by Thayer. That deflects off the leg of Bell and almost went in the net. Goaltender had already committed on that one. And that was almost a Crimson Tide strange goal. Crimson Tide will change things up. They had Harrington to take the draw, but now it looks like someone's going to take it. Bria Dill is going to. Zoe Tewksbury keeps it in, fires it down low. Puck is going to be picked up by Lindstone. Kept in, though, by the Crimson Tide at the point. There's a shot. It's going to go wide. Lily Tewksbury, who has a goal, pinches in, keeps the puck in the zone. Now at least Lindstrom skates it out, but it's going to be tipped away by the Crimson Tide. Picked up again for a shot, just wide of the net, deflected a little bit by Crossman as she followed that play nice. Now Crossman drops it back to the point for Lindstone. And the Crimson Tide will clear it out. 
And McDermott will cover up that one with 11-19 to go in the second period. Spalding Crimson Tide picking up one goal in this period, a shorthanded one from Portia Burrard, and they lead it 3-1. to one. They'll have to drop it again. It'll be Bell and Kennedy on the draw. Of course, we jinx it, and Kennedy is waved out. Wood takes the draw. Crimson Tide win the draw. Molly Parker tried to chip that one down low, was looking for McKelvey. It's going to be cleared out. And Maddie Seaton's going to have to cover up that one, or is she? It was in the glove for a few moments, no whistle. Here come the Crimson Tide. Here's Bell. Bell has trouble digging it out of the corner, but gets it to Berard. She's got speed. Portia Berard to McKelvey for the shot, and what a save by the goaltender, McDermott. Beautiful setup for the Crimson Tide. Berard gave that one over to McKelvey, who's got the wicked shot. Now Bell tries to backhand it back in. Crimson Tide will keep it in. Here's Zoe Tewksbury. Tewksbury around the net, throws it out front. It trickles. There's some open room now. Here's another shot from Parker. It's knocked down. And the Raiders able to clear it out. That time the Raiders will take an icing as the Crimson Tide are putting a ton of pressure on. McKelvey comes off the bench kind of uh, talking to herself. I can't believe I didn't bury that one. It'll be Morris on the draw for the Crimson Tide. Here's Hannah King. It's loose in front. King takes a second whack at it and immediately. Arika Petorti separates Hannah King from her goaltender. The shot is deflected on the way in by Thayer. Now King goes back to Lily Tewksbury. Tewksbury's shot is wide. Dill will try to dig it out of the corner with Cooley there. They go back to the point for Thayer. Thayer goes over to Tewksbury. Tewksbury's shot gets through. It goes off the pad. Bria Dill almost with a chance to knock in that rebound. Another shot. This is knocked down, and the Raiders will break the other way. Here comes Cooley. Cooley's cross-ice pass, they're going to get a shot out of it, but it's going to be, and they put it in the corner. Tough angle shot. They bury it in for the Raiders. So the Rutland Raiders convert on a two-on-one. And it's a three-to-two game. Cooley worked it down, and I believe it was Crossman who buried the shot. We'll get uh, the official scoring on that one. It comes at the 9.34 mark. Play continues along the boards. Yet Crossman gets it from Cooley. Here comes Cooley again. Tries to center it out front, but the Crimson Tide will knock that puck away. Pass looking for Bell, but it's going to go over her stick. Crossman will fire it down into the Crimson Tide zone. Parker will try to work it around for the Crimson Tide. And Spalding will come out of the zone. Two defenders back. Here comes Bell. Bell with Burrard. Bell skates into the zone. Bell throws it back to Burrard. She got a stick on it. Now a wicked shot from McKelvey gets through, but it deflects off the goaltender, and it's cleared out. Molly Parker in her own zone. We'll work it over to Zoe Tewksbury. 
Crimson Tide will hack at the puck, goes back in, but the Raiders end up being offsides on that play. A tight one here at the Barry BOR, what a lot of people expected. Last time they played, Rutland won by a score of two to one. It's a one goal game here as the Crimson Tide lead it three to two. Puck is gonna be thrown in by Anna Gallopo, but it goes back to the Crimson Tide. Now it's gonna be backhanded in by Kennedy and Seton will have to cover that one up. Raiders get a face off in the Crimson Tide zone and out comes that top unit. Hubert, Crossman and Cooley for the Raiders. Now it's Cooley stops in the corner. Crossman comes in to help. Crimson Tide come away with the puck. They try to reverse it around, but Cooley steals it in back of the net. They throw it right through the slot area. Now another look, Seaton is down. They have two or three whacks at it. Crossman had two or three, and the Crimson Tide and Bria Dill are gonna come out with the puck. Raiders very close to tying up this one. Now Hannah King traps it in with her skates along the boards. Addison Hubert now will bank it off the board. It's going to go on the stick of Molly Parker. Parker goes over to Tewksbury. Tewksbury looks up. She was looking for Bell as she broke it in. McDermott will work it over into the corner. Puck is going to be picked up by Lindstone. Now it's Crossman in the corner. Goes back to the point. Zoe Tewksbury with the shot and the save there by Sierra McDermott. No rebound. Six fifty-two to go in the second period. Crimson Tide lead it three to two. Bell wins the draw back to Tewksbury. Tewksbury over to Burrard. Now Bell's shot deflects off two or three players, goes wide. Parker pinches in low to pick up the puck. Now Bell finds Tewksbury. Tewksbury's shot goes off the shin pad of Gallopo, goes over into the corner. Now another shot deflects off Becca McKelvey. Petorti will try to work the puck around. Crimson Tide will have to clear the zone. Pass goes off the stick of Portia Burrard. Now Tewksbury tries to get it over Burrard. Becca McKelvey in back of the net. McKelvey up against the boards with Alyssa Kennedy. McKelvey tries to muscle that puck out. Burrard comes in to help. Kennedy comes away with it. Now they do get the puck out to center ice, but there's two defenders back. They did get that to Sidney Wood. Now here comes McKelvey the other way. McKelvey with, Dia, with Wood, or rather with Bria Dill, and it's wide of the net. McKelvey tries to dig it out of the corner and is taken right back with good speed through center ice. Here's Crossman. Crossman keeps it in the zone. Crossman, a couple of nifty moves coming in as Cooley for a shot and Maddie Seaton with the save. Great setup there for the Raiders. Crossman, who's buzzing out there, working the corners. Now Cooley tries to dig it out front. Crimson Tide, though, take it away. Puck is banked off the boards to Ellie Parker, taken right back by Crossman. Now Parker will throw it down low. And the Raiders were offsides as they worked it into the zone. A couple of times, Rutland has had a chance to tie this one up. It'll be Crossman and Emily Morris on the draw. Now Tewksbury tries to fire it in, but it's fired right back down. Zoe Tewksbury picks up the puck. Tewksbury skating in with Izzy Moyes.
Crimson Tide keep it in the zone. Now the Raiders will break out. Two defenders back. Working her way into the zone. It's Elise Lindstone. Jamming up against the boards with a couple of players. Crimson Tide come away with it. Zoe Tewksbury comes out with the puck. Players again battle. Now the Crimson Tide will just fire it down. It's going to go on the stick of Cooley. Cooley circles around. Here comes Cooley over the blue line. Good speed. Cooley works her way into the zone, but the puck is taken away by Zoe Tewksbury. Crimson Tide were looking for a change, so Tewksbury fires it in. They get fresh bodies out there. 3.43 to go. Chelsea Bell steals the puck. Now Becca McKelvey will work the corner. McKelvey works it over to Portia Burrard. Now they throw it out front for Chelsea Bell. The shot is wide. Bell lets the second shot go. It's knocked down. Bell with a third chance, and that's wide of the net. Burrard digs it out of the corner, goes back to the point as they work it in. Now it's Lily Tewksbury, but that shot is blocked by the Raiders. It's going to go out. Tewksbury will circle, gets it over to Burrard. Burrard works it over the blue line to McKelvey. McKelvey skates and tries to make a couple of nifty dish moves. Now the puck is chipped toward the front of the net. And here comes Crossman the other way, breaking out for Rutland. Two defenders back. Crossman is over the blue line. The puck is ticked away by Tewksbury. And it's going to go over into the far corner. Puck is going to be dug out, though, by Kennedy. Kennedy throws it out front. Crimson Tide will clear it down. They were looking for a changeup. Won't be icing as Rutland touches up in back of the net. Hannah King speeds in, gets the puck. King circling around. Hannah King, tough angle shot, and it almost got through. Came out of that corner with speed, let the shot go. Another one is thrown toward the front of the net. Now Tewksbury goes back to the point. Zoe Tewksbury, but it's tipped away. Exactly two minutes to go in the second period. Each team scoring in the second period. Crimson Tide lead it three to two. It'll be Harrington on the draw. Harrington against Kennedy. Crimson Tide will get to the puck first. Molly Parker gets it over to Dill. Dill tries to do a draw pass, but it goes right on a Rutland stick. Now the Crimson Tide will break the other way. Hannah King with speed. Hannah King over the blue line, one defender back. Hannah King's shot is blocked. King goes down over into the corner. Slow to get up. She does, a shot off the pad by Harrington. Now King tries to work it around the boards, gets it over to Dill. Dill stops in the corner. McKelvey goes down low. Host of players will try to dig it out right in front of our camera location. Here's Zoe Tewksbury gets it over McKelvey for the backhander and she scores! Zoe Tewksbury feeds Becca McKelvey and she goes upstairs on McDermott and the Crimson Tide go up four to two. Good puck movement as you see on our replay and just lifting it up into the net is Becca McKelvey. Zoe Tewksbury will get the primary assist on that Crimson Tide goal. One minute remaining in the second period, last period of play. Crimson Tide goal, scored by number 22, Becca Here comes Bell. Zoe. Bell with a wicked shot, getting a piece of that one is McDermott. Now Lily Tewksbury fires it toward the front of the net. They're trying to break the puck over to Crossman. Crossman with good speed, but Lily Tewksbury staying right with her. 
Crossman digs it out of the corner, has Cooley out front, who's got a dangerous shot, but couldn't get it to her that time. Crimson Tide breaking in is McKelvey. McKelvey is in clean and getting a pad on it is McDermott. Good scoring opportunity with only 15 to go. Time is running out for a quick shift for Rutland. Only four seconds to go. Crossman is going to get a shot, but it's blocked by the Crimson Tide. And the period runs out. Some exciting hockey in the last few moments of that period. After two, Spalding Crimson Tide lead it by a score of four to two. We'll get uh, your shots for the second period. And uh, for the most part, a fairly evenly played period. Crimson Tide outshot the Raiders 12 to eight. First period shots were even. As far as scoring goes in the second period, the Crimson Tide took a three to one lead on a, a shorthanded goal from Portia Berard. However, Rutland fought back on Crossman's goal from Cooley. But the Crimson Tide with exactly one minute to go in the second period. Becca McKelvey scored from Zoe Tewksbury. And that's where we stand after two periods of play. Spalding Crimson Tide out in front by a score of four to two over the Rutland Raiders. We appreciate you guys joining us for high school hockey action on CVTV 723.org. Also, CBTV channel number 192 in Barry, and of course, all the games you'll find at cbtsport.net. My name is Jim Severance. You can always uh, get in touch with me. We always like to do uh, shout outs, people checking out the game. I believe we have a, a Team Berard member down in Springfield, Vermont. I'm sure it was excited when Porsche buried that goal. I know we have Team McKelvey members, I believe, in either North or South Carolina checking out the broadcast. You can send me an email. The address I use only for hockey is my name, Jim Severance. It's S-E-V-E-R-A-N-C-E, -E, like severance pay. And that is at iCloud.com, Jim Severance at iCloud.com. If you're checking out the broadcast anywhere locally, Maybe around the USA, maybe it's a big Wednesday night in Vegas and you got uh, the game going on down in Rutland. Well, it certainly would love to hear from you. Two periods down and Spalding leads it by a score of four to two. We'll take a break and we'll come back with third period action for you very shortly. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to our weekly showcase. As you can see, we're in the Spalding Gymnasium. It is uh, Wednesday, uh, February 9th. I'm here with Spalding Athletic Director and Class of 2000 uh, graduate, Natalie Sofen. Uh, Natalie, uh, it has been an extraordinary season for winter sports. Super successful. What's been going on? How have we pulled this off? Um, I think after coming uh, from last year and having a limited winter schedule, uh, kids were really eager to get out there and, and compete and compete in front of uh, their family and friends and uh, the, the community. Um, so I think that's been a really driving force. Um, and having a full schedule has been exciting as well, even though you never know when you're actually gonna play those games. Uh, we've had some cancellations yep. here and there and we quickly pivot and everyone's been really, really flexible with doing that. And uh, we're looking forward for the next you know, couple weeks of regular season and then headed into playoffs where we're gonna hopefully host a whole bunch of games. It's really picking up now. And you know, I think uh, just this, the fact that these last couple of months, kids have been able to be kids, compete, have their families participate and watch the games. It's just been awesome. We're going to take a, a moment or two now to hear from the captains themselves. Wait till you hear what they have to say about how successful this season's been. Let's check that out. I'm Nick Pierce. I'm from the wrestling team, and we're 11 and 0 right now. We've won four tournaments, and we're getting ready for our state tournament here to break a record that's been going for 34 years, so we're pretty excited. All right. My name's Autumn. I'm senior, and I'm captain of the girls' varsity basketball team. Um, our current record is 11 and four, and we only have two weeks left before the playoffs. Um, we've been playing great team basketball this year, and it's really fun to play with these girls. And I hope to see you all at the odd. Uh, hi, I'm Cooper Diego. I'm the captain of the boys varsity basketball team. So far, we are 11 and two on the season, sitting at the four spot in D2. Uh, I'd like to shout out the seniors. They've all been playing well with energy. And our senior game is February 21st, and we're looking forward to playoffs. 
Hi, my name is Zoe Tewksbury. I'm captain of the Spalding Girls hockey team. We're currently 13 and 1, outscoring opponents 87 to 16. Stay tuned for the rest of our season. Thank you for your support. Hi, I'm Jameson Mass, captain of the boys hockey team. I'm Jameson Solomon, captain of the boys hockey team. We have a five and nine record this year, and uh, we're we're moving up in the rankings. So it's been we're a good gonna, year. We're gonna make a deep playoff run this year. Yep. Hi, my name's Noah Rubel, and I'm one of the co-captains on the indoor track team. We had a nice season this year. We had a bit of a smaller team, but it was still really nice to work together and it was super fun. Um, hopefully things will be good in preparation for outdoors this year. Well, thanks for listening to these captains, everybody. What a season and it's so great to hear directly from them. I know this, they are super thankful to one of the big heroes in our community, our Spalding Athletic Director, Natalie Sofen, who was here at the beginning of this showcase with me. At the risk of embarrassing her, I want to point out the incredible job she has done this winter to make sure our students can, can play every, every week, not miss games, and that we have full capacity for our spectators in the stands. Without Natalie, this wouldn't happen. So when you see her, give her a big shout out and thank you for, this, for the season that we're having right now. And speaking of that, with the playoffs coming and the seasons winding up, one of the great ways that you can support our schools is to come to the home games, cheer the kids on. This is a great opportunity to show your support for the schools. We know that the kids will appreciate it and love having you there. You also have an opportunity to support our schools by voting before vacation. If you look at the link right below me here, it shows you how to get an absentee ballot and you can vote before March 1 if that's easier for you. We really need your support and we always appreciate it. Uh, thanks for listening. Get out to the games. Cheer the kids on. Have a great rest of the week. Northfield Savings Bank is the bank of builders, makers, doers, and explorers, multitaskers, commuters, planners. In other words, we are the bank of you and everything you do. With mobile and online banking, drive-up service, and of course, in our branches. That is banking your way. That is Northfield Savings Bank. by the very Montpelier Times Argus, www.timesargus.com, with award-winning sports and news journalists located on 47 North Main Street, Suite 200 in Barrie, Vermont. You can reach them at 479-0191. The Barrie Montpelier Times Argus is real local news that matters to Central Vermonters. Central Vermont's newspaper of record. That's www.timesargus.com. Made possible by locally owned Packard Fuels, located in East Montpelier, Vermont. Packard Fuels is a proud supporter of local athletics and community events. Packard Fuels provides home heating oil and service throughout central Vermont. Owned by Ellery Packard III, Packard Fuels, 802-262-3835. Packard Fuels, keeping you warm. Mark and I worked at Barrytown Elementary School when we were in college. We're both very family-oriented and community-driven. Barry has a special place in our heart, obviously being our hometown. When I met Mark and Ruben, they were college grads. Seven years later, they manage over 750 units in Vermont. In their spare time, they give back to the people they grew up with. There are people in our community who are battling childhood cancer. This organization doesn't just financially fund their hospital bills. We actually help them out with the day-to-day -day expenses. Local business owners, local community members, just a lot of local people that are congregating to uh, help raise, raise a lot of money for these families. In small towns everywhere across America, this story gets repeated over and over. Local businesses coming together to support their friends, neighbors, and customers. Our priorities and the bank's priorities align. We're all trying to make the community a better place.
This game video is made possible by All Set Driving School. All Set Driving School offers three teen driver's education class sessions, spring, summer, and fall. With DMV certified instructors, contact them by phone, 371-9293, or email allsetdrive at aol.com. All Set Driving School, a proud supporter of U32 basketball and Central Vermont sport. From the Barry B.O.R. getting ready for third period action. Spalding Crimson Tide taking on the Rutland Raiders. After two, Spalding leads it by a score of 4-2. to two. Raiders will be out on the ice in a couple of moments. And then the Crimson Tide will come on out for second period action. It's Jim Severance along with Todd Mansfield and our producer Ben Brown. High school hockey action on cbtsport.net. We appreciate everyone checking out the broadcast. I believe I had the wrong state for Team McKelvey. I think they're in Kennesaw, Georgia. I think that's where we've got uh, some McKelvey fans that are checking out the broadcast. I, I know it's in Georgia. Appreciate everyone checking out our broadcast. On our link, you can always uh, give us a donation to help us out with our broadcast. Our CEO of the company, Carl Parton. The last month, he has not bought anything for us at the games. No M&Ms, nothing. So a donation may uh, keep us nourished during uh, Saturday's game where we got a double header for you. Again, uh, coming up on Saturday, we've got two games including the Spalding Girls taking on BFA St. Albans. Undefeated number one in the state, BFA St. Albans coming here to the Barry BOR. That's going to be a three o'clock start. And also on Saturday, we've got uh, the boys in action. The boys who, in a couple of hours, have to take on mighty BFA up in St. Albans. They'll be taking on South Burlington, which is a, uh, it's a key game for the Spalding boys who are battling for the number five seed in D1. As far as the Spalding girls go, as you take a look at the standings, they're sitting pretty right now at number two. So as long as they can, for the most part, win out and finish either at number one or number two, that means they would host the quarterfinal. And if they advance on that one, they would host the semifinal. And of course, then the state finals this year, as uh, we are back to normal in Vermont, the state finals this year will be at UVM's Gutterson Fieldhouse. It's gonna be so great to have state finals back at UVM's Gutterson Fieldhouse after last year's shortened, slightly strange COVID season. It'll be Chelsea Bell taking the draw against Isabel Crossman. And we'll get underway with the third period. Mike Douglas doing a j great job with the music here. Spalding girls tradition. It's always journey before we get ready for the third period. Boys go, I think, with Van Halen. All right, puck is on the ice. Underway with the third period. Raiders down by two, puck stolen away by Bell. Bell gets it over to McKelvey. McKelvey back to Bell. Bell goes over into the corner. Throws it through the slot area, nobody there. Now Parker fires it down low. A redirect and they score! The Crimson Tide come right out! Puck is redirected in front of the net. It was a quick one, but I believe it is number two for Portia Burrard. It is, Portia Burrard gets her second of the game. And the Crimson Tide jump out five to two.
That comes just 25 seconds into the period. That Crimson Tide goal from Portia Berard to make it five to two. As you heard, McKelvey and Bell come up with assist on the goal by Burrard. Rutland Raiders now down by three. We'll try to work the puck out of the corner. They throw it out front, but it's knocked down by McKelvey. McKelvey able to clear it over to Hannah King. King will bank it off the boards. Anna Gallopo will fire it back down, but it goes on the stick of Lily Tewksbury. Tewksbury reverses around looking for Dill. It passes in front of her. Now Lindstone will try to work it. Albert is taken right back by the Crimson Tide as they battle for it at center ice. Here's Kennedy. Kennedy's over the blue line. Puck trickles off her stick, though it's gonna be picked up by Lily Tewksbury over to King. Taken right back by Hubert. Now it's Crossman with the puck for Rutland. Here's Becca McKelvey. McKelvey will throw it in. She'll chase for it. A lot of seniors on this Rutland roster. And the numbers are low, so there are some questions about next year. Just getting the numbers to uh, play. And if you play, if you play in D1 or D2. I know there's surrounding schools, and I don't know if Rutland gets players from Mill River and West Rutland and some of the uh, surrounding schools down there. But uh, if they don't, they definitely are going to have to start to get players from other communities to field the team in D1. Go, go. This year they're good, but as soon as these seniors graduate, the numbers are down in Rutland. Puck goes back to Parker for a shot. It's deflected on the way through. Bell picks it up right in front of McKelvey. Good shooting angle, and it was wide. Might have been knocked down. Might have been off the pad of the goaltender, McDermott. That long pass will be icing. And as for the Crimson Tide, not a big senior class at all. Bria Dill, Zoe Tewksbury, Emily Morris, that's it. There's only three seniors on the Spalding Crimson Tide squad. Here comes Hannah King. King self-pass off the boards. She'll get there first. She gets around Petority. Hannah King speeds, tries to throw it out front, but it's going to go right on the stick of Wood. Wood gets it out to center ice. King again will fire it in. Puck is in the corner. Bria Dill and Arika Petorti battling for the puck. We mentioned Petorti was the one that ended the Crimson Tide's season short-handed in overtime one year ago. Now Lily Tewksbury goes around the boards looking for Bill. Petorti will keep it in. Two defenders back. Here's Chelsea Bell. Bell cuts around, picks up the puck. Bell is going to circle again, look for reinforcements, gets it to McKelvey. McKelvey now is going to circle. Gets it back to Parker. Parker back to Bell. Or Zoe Tewksbury for a shot and glove save. Good puck movement by the Crimson Tide. And Sierra McDermott, the junior goaltender, has to snag that one. Face-off is one, goes back to Parker. She chops it toward the front of the net. Now Zoe Tewksbury. 
Goes off her stick. And here comes Cooley. Cooley is over the blue line. Cooley stops. Snap shot goes just over the net. Nice release on that shot. Now again it goes toward the front of the net, taken away by the Crimson Tide. Molly Parker goes down, and that's going to be a, a trip on Rutland. She almost skated over the Rutland Raiders stick. That may be the Raiders' first penalty. If not, it's their second. That may very well be the first penalty that Rutland has had this game. It'll be a, a trip on Addison Hubert. Now Ellie Parker with a shot. It's knocked down on the way in. McKelvey is trying to fire it back to Tewksbury, but it's going to go down into the Crimson Tide zone. That's Chelsea Bell. Bell gets it over to Becca McKelvey. McKelvey shot goes wide, goes over into the corner, picked up by Cooley. Cooley will bank it around the boards. Zoe Tewksbury keeps it in, though. Trying to set up Emily Morris. Now a tough angle shot out of the corner, and Becca McKelvey buries it. Power play goal for the Crimson Tide. Berard has two, and now McKelvey has two. I've said that a number of times at Crimson Tide games. You don't want to. You don't want to take penalties, and Rutland did a great job staying out of the box until then. But the Crimson Tide power play buries them quick. Portia Berard picking up the assist on that McKelvey goal. Now it's Ruby Harrington in the corner. King collides with a Rutland player. Play continues on. Puck is going to be fired into the zone. It's going to be picked up by Lily Tewksbury. She gets it over to Ruby Harrington. Harrington over the blue lines. Knocked off her stick. Crossman picks up the puck. Crossman now with Cooley. Gets it over to Cooley. Cooley trouble corralling that pass. Crossman, though, will dig it in down low. Tewksbury, good job with the stick to knock it away. Now they go back to the point. Now they're going to fire it down low. Cooley circles. Cooley face-off circle. Has Crossman in front. Beautiful setup, but they couldn't bury it. Looks like a play that uh, they probably work on that one in practice. Now only one defender back, but the puck is going to be fired wide. Berard up against the boards. Berard, though, cradles the puck with her body and breaks it all the way down into the Rutland zone. Berard's going to go end to end for the second time. Last time she did it, she scored a goal. That time, by the time she was in on the goaltender, she was a little too tight to get a decent shot off. But a good rush there from Portia Berard out of the zone. Chelsea Bell wins the draw, but it goes on a Rutland stick. And here comes Cooley. Saved by Seaton. Second chance is knocked down. It's in front and it's going to be cleared out. But no, it's kept in at the point by... Elise Lindstone. Now Parker tries to get it around to McKelvey. Here comes Berard. Berard skates into the zone. And a break the other way. Trying to center it toward the front of the net. Sydney Wood, there's a shot, and the Raiders get a goal as Sydney Wood gets it back to Elise Lindstone, and Lindstone buries it. 
In it, six to three. That comes at the 725 mark. The Raiders throw it again down into the Crimson Tide zone. Now Lily Tewksbury gets it over to Hannah King. Thrown back down low. Wood comes up with an assist on that one. Next Saturday, one day before the Super Bowl, we've got a double header for you. Girls at three o'clock, 315 against BSA, boys against South Burlington, both those games on cbtsport.net. Spalding boys up in BFA, I believe it's a seven o'clock face-off at Collins Purley. Portia Berard burns her way in and it's the first one to the puck. She's been all over the place tonight. Crimson Tide keep the puck in. First shot is blocked by Thayer. Now Lily Tewksbury fires it in. Berard tried to throw that out front to Chelsea Bell. Now again, Berard tries to do a nifty backhand pass. Was looking for Bell. Becca McKelvey in back of the net. Here's Tewksbury with good puck movement. A backhander up close as Bell. McDermott has to make a couple of saves for Rutland. Elizabeth Cooley skates out of the zone. No doubt Cooley and Crossman are the two big goal scorers for this Rutland squad. Two big offensive players. Now Kennedy comes in. Outside the face-off circle, shot is tipped away by the Crimson Tide. Molly Parker gets it over to Ruby Harrington. Harrington stays with the play, tries to get it out front. Dill got a tip on that one, didn't get much on it. Now it's backhanded down low by Parker. Emily Moore steals the puck in back of the net. And it's going to be cleared back down by Huber. Zoe Tewksbury will get there first for the Crimson Tide, but that'll be an icing on the Spalding Crimson Tide. Well, after this killer stretch that Rutland has had to play, they've had to play undefeated BFA. They've had to play Essex twice defending state champions and they've had to play Spalding the number two team in D1. In fact I was talking with the coach before the game and she was concentrating on the game Catherine and uh, she didn't know exactly who they were playing next but she said you know it's got to be better than what we've been going at because they've had to play four games against the best teams in the state. Here comes Bell now for the Crimson Tide. Bell does the self-pass off the boards. Tries to get in there, but a good job knocking her off the puck was the defender. Elise Lindstone with some help from Cooley. Nice move coming in as Crossman, and she scores! Pretty goal for the Rutland Raiders, and hey, it's 6-4. Came in, did a little hesitation, and then fired the shot off, as you see on our replay. And the Raiders have scored back-to-back -back goals, and they're only down by two. And it was Addison Hubert that got the goal.
Beautiful goal by Hubert. I think I credited Crossman for it, but no, that was Hubert that did that move. Two goal game, the Crimson Tide lead it. Petorti around the goal. Now Zoe Tewksbury with the puck. Here's Ruby Harrington. Harrington trying to get a cross ice pass, but it's taken away by the Rutland Raiders. Ooh, if they get one more, we all of a sudden got a real exciting game. Puck is almost stolen in the zone, but it's taken right back by the Crimson Tide. Lily Tewksbury, couple of nice moves, but it's taken back by Rutland. And here's Cooley in. Cooley is in clean, and she scores! I kind of delayed my call because Seaton got a pad on it, but the puck slid ever so slowly into the net. And all of a sudden, we have got ourselves a game. Six to five on the goal from Elizabeth Cooley. There's going to be a timeout here. I'm guessing probably counts by Spalding head coach Dave Lawrence. The Cooley goal was unassisted. So what was looking like uh, the Spalding Crimson Tide skating away and uh, picking up the victory, picking up their 14th win of the season. Now we have 3-13. Crimson Tide only up by one. And uh, you got to say definitely that Rutland is playing with a lot of emotion out there. They are going to come out of that open, that face off, out of the Spalding timeout. Right you, Rutland comes in currently in fifth position in D1. But uh, they could very much bypass. MMU CBU, the co-op team, if they can get a couple of more victories. And you can see they're gonna bring that top line out there. Crimson Tide will leave their bench. Trying to pump up the fans. It'll be Bell and Crossman on the draw and we've got ourselves a one goal game. This is not the NHL. It's way too early to take a look at the goaltender, but we will eventually once we work our way down. Now it's centered right out in front and taken away by the Crimson Tide. Once the clock works down a little more, we'll see what Rutland does as far as pulling the goaltender. Oh, loose puck in front. McDermott got back with the glove and covered it up, and that almost went in the net. McDermott, though, makes the save. Two fifty three to go. It'll be Bell to take the draw. Bell with McKelvey and Burrard out there for the Crimson Tide. Referee talking to the Spalding Crimson Tide bench. I'm not sure what their question was. That that puck did not roll across the into the net. All right, they'll face it off. Crimson Tide win it. Here's Parker. Parker shot, and McDermott will sprawl out and cover it up. Crimson Tide won the draw. They got it back to the point to Molly Parker. It'll be Bell and Crossman again. Raiders get the puck over to Hubert, who scored a huge goal to get her team back into the game. 
Hubert tries to jam it out of the corner. Now Cooley comes in to help, but the Crimson Tide and Bell pick up the puck. Puck is going to be kept in at the point. The Raiders try to work it around to get it over to Cooley for a shot. Just wide, actually, in front of the net. Now it's Crossman in back of the net. Crossman and Bell colliding. Bell comes up with the puck. We may get a hook on Rutland. I'm not sure what he's going to call. We'll let him do the play. And he is making the call. Impeded Chelsea Bell as she was working out of the zone. That's a huge penalty on Rutland. Comes with only 2.07 to go. Penalty will be on Isabel Crossman. So the Crimson Tide go on that power play that uh, They've already scored one power play goal this game, and I think they did it in 20 seconds. But more importantly, it throws a monkey wrench into the Raider plans to pull the goaltender unless they have a golden opportunity and really control the puck in the Crimson Tide zone shorthanded. Goes over the stick with Emily Morrison. That's going to be an icing. So that is going to bring the face off down into the Crimson Tide zone. McDermott is still in the net. One forty-six to go in the game. There's only a seven second discrepancy as far as when the penalty expires. Here comes Portia Berard with a lot of room. Berard comes in, pad save McDermott. That was Molly Parker actually, my apologies. No, it was Berard. Now Bell works it down low. They get it over to McK McKelvey in the corner. Precious time, though, ticking away. Goes back to Bell from the point. Chelsea Bell shot is wide. Trying to do a wraparound is McKelvey. She's got two. And McDermott covers up. One oh six to go. 59 to go on the penalty. Becca McKelvey on the draw, gets it over to Berard. It's loose in front, couple of players there. Now McKelvey snaps one in and she scores! Hat trick for Becca McKelvey. Crimson Tide up by two, power play goal, number two. Comes exactly at the one minute mark. Here's a stat you don't see very often, and I don't always go by what I've written down, but Becca McKelvey scored at the one minute mark left in the second period, and she did the same thing, one minute mark of the third period. Don't see that very often. Also, my scoring isn't accurate very often. Uh, here we go, Portia Berard goes over the blue line. Berard goes back to the point. Shot is knocked down on the way in. The Raiders will break it out. We'll keep an eye on McDermott, but I guess she's going to stay in the net. Raiders down by two. Nope, she is out. Extra attacker is out, so it's a wide open net. As Crossman just came off the bench. 31 seconds to go. Raiders with the extra attacker. They throw it out front, and they score! It's not over yet with 24.2 to go. Extra attacker was out there. And a second chance goal for the Rutland Raiders. 
And our producer, Ben Brown, I, I think his finger is killing him for punching all these replays on goals in the last couple of minutes. Not over yet. Here's Dill. If the Raiders, they gotta hurry to get it out of the zone. There's only 16 seconds to go. Puck is banked off the boards. Rutland comes in, six seconds to go. Tipped away by the Crimson Tide. Puck is on the stick of Harrington. Crossman tries to throw it out front and the game comes to an end. Wow. Thrilling 24 seconds, and uh, Rutland did get the puck into the Crimson Tide zone. Did get the goaltender out for a split second. Final score, I gotta write it down to remember it. Crimson Tide win it by a score of seven to six over the Rutland Raiders, and I told you basically the start of this one, when these two teams meet, it's always an exciting game. They played two games against each other this season, and uh, both times they've ended with one goal victories as the Crimson Tide won by a score of two to one down at Spartan Arena earlier this year. As far as the goal scoring goes for the Crimson Tide, a big one for Becca McKelvey as McKelvey scored the hat trick. She had three on the night. Portia Barard had a couple of goals, and uh, the other goal is coming from Chelsea Bell and Lily Tewksbury. Looking at uh, the Rutland scoring, and that last one came so quick, I honestly didn't get who scored that last goal. I have got um, Cooley with two goals. I've got Lindstone with a goal. I've got Hubert with a goal. Missing one, Crossman with a goal. And I think that adds up to six. Spalding Crimson Tide went up by a score of seven to six over the Spalding Crim over the, the Spalding Crimson Tide went it over the Rutland Raiders by a score of seven to six. Crimson Tide go to 14 and one on the season. They have now won five straight. Rutland a tough loss as they go to seven and seven on the season. Crimson Tide back in action next Saturday as they take on the number one team in the state, BFA. I want to thank our broadcast team. It was Ben Brown pressing all the uh, buttons and our cameraman, Todd Mansfield. That is going to be it from the Barry BOR. Crimson Tide win it 7-6. to six. It's Jim Severance. Good night. This has been a local sports video production brought to you by CVTSport.net, your local sports video leader. We'd like to thank our longtime partners.